Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm Kelly Huber. Um, and like Lewis had expressed, I grew up very different than I present to you as I am today. I grew up here in New England. Um, I grew up as Jonathan Robert Huber. And as of a year ago, I was still Jonathan Robert Huber. Um, I'm proud to say that now I am Kelly Noel Huber. Um, this past year has been an amazing trip for me. Um, my transition has gone, in many eyes, and in certainly in my own eyes, has gone extremely smoothly. And after listening to Lewis speak, and him speaking about people who have gone before me and gone before all of us, it's clear that some people have paved quite a good path for us. Um, for myself, um, initially I was fired from my job in Connecticut as a prosthetist. And I will explain what a prosthetist is since everyone's eyes were probably slightly confused when that was said. Um, I am a person who makes artificial limbs. I make artificial limbs for amputees who have lost their legs, lost their arms, um, whether it's from war, whether it's from diabetes, whether it's from sickness, that's my job. Having that viewpoint and understanding what the rehab process is about is something that was very dear to me when I was about to tackle my own inner concerns. And that was that I, my body, as people would say, didn't necessarily match my mind. When I was going about moving forward to become myself, I realized seeing a lot of my patients go through the process of losing their limb and coming to terms with losing their limb, there's a change that happens in the person when they recognize they're different or things aren't going to be the same. They, they lose something that's special in them. They don't behave or act like the person they are. They lose the person they are for a period of time. And I can say for myself, over this past year, and even more, probably three years, the person that I was disappeared for a while because all I was thinking about was, was my gender correct? Could I walk into a bathroom? Could I walk into my workplace? If I came out at my workplace, would I be fired? Would my children lose their home because I came out as a trans person? And that came very close to happening. After coming out at my work in Connecticut, three months later, I was fired. I lost my job. I was put into a position of having to find another job. Luckily, I had found a place that I had worked at for seven years prior to that, and I was immediately accepted and was able to come back. And when I returned, it wasn't long after that, and that, that job is here in Massachusetts. I work at Braintree Rehab Hospital in Braintree, Massachusetts. And when I came out there, the law here in, in the state of Massachusetts had yet to be passed. So when I stepped forward again, the fear of knowing that I could simply be fired once again was very real and very true. Luckily, that process has gone seamless. I am absolutely amazed that I can walk down a hospital full of 300 employees and have yet to have a negative comment brought towards me. I have come out to all my patients. And when I speak about my patients, these are not patients that I see once or twice and then they're gone. These are patients I see for a lifetime. And I have absolutely been accepted. The words I get from people is, are you still going to be here? Are you still going to do what you do? Are you still going to be my prosthetist? Are you still going to make it? Essentially what they're saying to me is, are you still going to make a difference in my life? And the message that I want to bring to you today is that I know that public accommodations is a huge concern here in the state of Massachusetts. And passing laws about this is extremely important. But as Lewis had said earlier on, it's us as people that make that change happen. And when I approached my transition, I made a vow to myself. I said every single person in my life, whether it's the patients I see, whether it's my parents, whether it's my children, whether it's my ex-wife, whoever it was, I was going to sit down with each and every one of them and explain to me of them the sincerity of who I am and the sincerity of who I am, not just as a woman, but as a person, as a caring person who makes a difference in this world. And I think that what each of us should be doing is that. 
as much as it's wonderful that a loss has passed. Getting out there, being yourself, explaining who you are, explaining the sincerity of who you are is the most important part of this. And I ask each and every one of you who are trans to take that step. Not an easy step, trust me. Every single person that I stood before, the way I describe it, it was like jumping off a cliff. When you jump off a cliff into a deep pool of water, you don't know if you're coming up when you reach that water. And every time I jumped off that cliff, this cliff the same fear rose inside me. But wonderfully, I have yet to have a, say, have a person say to me they don't want me in their life. So, what I say to you is if you're in that position, take that step, but don't stop taking that step. Because my transition has gone smoothly, I don't have any difficulty when I walk into 7-Eleven and someone suspecting that I might have been male at one time. I didn't expect that. I had a fear that I would be walking everywhere and everyone would think, oh my gosh, there's a guy in a dress. <clears throat> I could do that. I could move on. I could just simply be a woman. But I choose to express to people who I am as a whole person. And the value in that is that in the future, there will be people, there will be children, there will be people who are in their 60s, who when they decide to come out, decide to be who they are, it's just a simple no-brainer. Okay, this person needs health care, this person needs to be better, this person can be happy. And it's not as big of a concern. And I hope, as we all move forward, that that's what the world looks like in several years. That people can just be themselves and be accepted for who they are and given the right medical attention to do that. And I want to thank you all for coming out today and thank you so much. Um, this is, I know it's a small crowd and normally I speak, speak to one person at a time. Um, and paradoxically, Tristan had said to me as we walked to this, or started to come to this, that um, I had said to him, the way I like to do things is one person at a time. So it's quite strange that I'm standing up here in front of a group of people and expressing to more than one person at a time. But I want to thank you all for listening to me. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.